we're going to start with you because uh, the couch would like to know, as America would, uh, the reaction from the Hunt family regarding the kicker, Harrison Butker. Well, I can only speak from my own experience, which is I've had the most incredible mom who had the ability to stay home and be with us as kids growing up. Um, and I understand that there are many women out there who can't make that decision. People are upset with a man who's speaking to Catholic women who already believe and embody the things that he's about to say. This is a part of Catholic theology. This is a part of the Catholic doctrine. This is what Catholic women believe. They don't believe in contraceptive. They don't believe in abortions. They don't believe in none of that. So the, the, the idea of Catholicism is to be married and be fruitful as God has called you to do. So when this man, in the context of the speech, at, in the context of a Catholic college, he's saying exactly what women are thinking and what the church believes in the speech. It's like saying, it's like me uh, uh, talking to police officers about when to draw a weapon, how to stay safe at domestic violence calls, and then firefighters get mad because I didn't, because I said something they didn't like. Well, like, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to police officers. He wasn't talking to you degenerate women that wanna, uh, uh, you know, get ran through on the weekend. He's talking to Catholic women who got good moral standards and who believe in the things that God has called them to be and do. This video is brought to you by TatumStore.com. TatumStore.com, get the merch link in the description section. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to mumble. <laughs> get you one of these Biden shirts. Let's get ready to mumble, because that's exactly what he's going to do on that debate stage when Donald Trump is whooping him, uh, you know, like a bad kid. Like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you get a notification anytime I go live and make a video. Make sure you still subscribe to this channel. Like this video, comment on this video, share this video. Let's get into this. The ladies present today, congratulations on an amazing accomplishment. You should be proud of all that you have achieved to this point in your young lives. I want to speak directly to you briefly, because I think it is you, the women, who have had the most diabolical lies told to you. How many of you are sitting here now about to cross this stage and are thinking about all the promotions and titles you are going to get in your career? Some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. Time out. That, that, they mad at that. He said many of you are going to venture out and do all these great things. I would argue that majority of you are most excited. Not the only thing you're excited about, but you're most excited about being married and the children you're going to bring to the world. That is Catholicism. And why the world is mad at the man for saying that in the context of which he was saying it and what he's saying wasn't wrong, it's beyond me. Women are mad at my wife online because my wife don't care, boy. She, she go harder than me. She write them little comments and they just, she said, she said, baby, I, I, I'll, be, I, I'll be blowing up on them and I don't even look at it because I know they mad. But my wife is articulating because, you know, it's funny because God did not call women to prioritize climbing the corporate ladder. I, I, I don't know why in our society we prioritize that. If that is a situation that you've been placed in and that's what you do to make a living and that's, that's what you believe to be best to take care of your family, then that's, your, that's, that's okay for you to pursue that. But just understand, that's not what God called you to do ultimately. He didn't give you a womb for nothing. He didn't give you fallopian tubes and ovaries for nothing. You're not ovulating for nothing. Just to be cute. Just to be, you know, it ain't cute because, I, you know, when you're bleeding and every week, I mean, every month, I mean, that's got to be horrifying. And I, I'm married to a woman, so I, I know. I feel bad for every time. I'm like, dang, I'm sorry, babe. You good? You need me to rub your feet or something? Because... That's got to be traumatizing every month for the rest of your life. Well, I guess until you get the menopause. But anyway, God didn't do that for you for nothing. Men, men didn't get the genitalia that men have just to be, you know, y'all know what I'm saying. I don't want to go down that path, but you know what I'm saying. He gave you these things to be fruitful and multiply. Fruitful and multiply. He didn't give it to you for you to have fun on a weekend with Johnny and them. That's not what he gave it to you for. It's for reproduction. And then the reason that it's, it's pleasurable is because it encourages reproduction. What you think they were doing before they had condoms and birth control and abortions and plan B and chemical abortion pills that they put in the mail. What do you think people were doing? When you laid up, it, it's a good chance a kid was going to come out of there. Anyway, let's move on. Um, so shout out to the young lady for having a, the courage, the boldness and courage to say what she said. 
And, and let me just add this. Men, th this is what I've learned. And I'm not trying to bash anybody for their financial status. When I talk to people who are highly successful in finances, in their relationship, in life, people that are millionaires, billionaires, whatever you want to call it, those people operate on a different level than people with the mindset of poverty. Every single wealthy person that I know understands the importance of raising their own children. A lot of people I know that have that mindset homeschool their children. And if they got enough money, they put their kids into a private education. Most of the time it's private Christian or Catholic education. Only people that get indoctrinated or brainwashed into the system thinks that it makes sense for mom and dad to be slaving over a job while others raise your children. Only people that have bought into the system with a poverty mindset. Do People people said this to my wife. They said, oh, pat yourself on the back. What's your greatest accomplishment is being a stay-at-home mom. Poor, dumb people think like that. People that make sense like Harrison and others realize that my wife's accomplishments is my accomplishments. <laughs> my wife being a stay-at-home mom allowed me to do what we're what I'm doing, which affects both of us. When you see a man that's worth $800 billion, his stay-at-home stay wife's accomplishment was helping him get to $800 billion. Therefore, they both have $800 billion. Hold the doggone phone. Now, this week, there's a guy in the news named Harrison Butker. <laughs> He's the kicker on the Kansas City Chiefs, also known as the Taylor Swift Chiefs. <laughs> he got invited to do the commencement address at a conservative Catholic college. But look, I, I can't express how much this guy is not like me. He's religious. He loves marriage. He loves kids. <laughs> I couldn't be more not like this guy. The He's in big trouble because he said at this event, and this is a Catholic college, conservative Catholics, and they th he's now history's greatest monster. Uh, again, I don't agree with much with this guy, but I don't get the thing. He said, uh, some of you, talking to this, the women here, some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world. Okay, that seems fairly like modern. But I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. I don't see what the big crime is. I really don't. And I think this is part of the problem people have with the left, is that lots of people in this country are like this. Like he's saying, some of you may go on to lead successful careers, but a lot of you are excited about this other way that people, everybody used to be. And now can it, can't that just be a choice too? And I feel like they feel very put upon. Like there's only one way to be a good person. And that's to get an advanced degree from one of those asshole factories like Harvard. <laughs> I find it very, very ironic that he's, he's saying, you know what, you, in my world, you know, uh, we like the women to stay at home and just have babies. And the college kids and the young people find this absolutely abhorrent. But they're demonstrating for Hamas right. to make that a law. It's not just an opinion in Hamas that you stay home and have the babies. We will enforce you for doing that. Okay, I just wanted to make that point. Uh, Nellie is queers for Palestine, right? Yes, Queers for Palestine. We, we both are. We wanted yeah. to come and do an intervention. So Trump... But let me just say this real quick. Young men, if you're listening, if there's young men that are listening, and, and older men who are wise will, will uh, appreciate what I'm saying and, and agree with me. My daddy told me this a long time ago, and it probably was one of the most invaluable things that my father ever told me. You got to understand this. In this life, you need to think about God's calling on your life. And your when you proceed to marry someone, you need to marry a woman that is equipped, capable, and prepared to help you accomplish what God has called you to do. You don't marry a woman to help her accomplish what God called her to do. That's when two people mess up. You marry a woman... And this is selfish. You don't have to marry the woman that needs somebody to, to help her accomplish what she needs to do. You need to marry a woman that is there to support and help you accomplish what you are trying to do. That's like if you own a business and you say, I need to hire a COO. And somebody tells you, no, you need to hire a COO. 
where you're looking out for their own endeavors too, and then y'all both are going in two different directions. They got their own thing going, you got your own thing going, so they're halfway in your business and they're halfway in their own stuff. That's that's crazy. You hire a COO that's 100% dedicated to the mission of the company, the mission and the direction of the company, and that person understands that they're the COO and not the CEO. They're the operations chief, not the executive chief. I want, I want people to understand that. When I got married to my wife, my wife knew that her calling was to marry a good man and be a support system to help that man reach what God has called them to. And so what did my wife do? Did she keep her job when we got married? Did she keep on? She worked that job for 20 years. Did my wife try to climb the corporate ladder? See, my wife knew a long time ago that she wasn't going to climb the corporate ladder because she knew one day she would be married. And then she knew her responsibility was to be a mom and take care of the family and, and, and be supportive of her husband. So my wife worked up for 20 years, had a good job, making more money than I was making when we first got together. And what did my wife do? She left her job and she focused on partnering with me to go to where God has called me to. And what happened? I have never been more successful. I have never been more blessed. I have never made more money. I have never been more happy. Harrison Bucker said the same thing about his wife. See, when, when, when you are a man and you find a good wife, a virtuous woman, a woman of integrity, a woman that understands how to serve, you will become an incredibly great man. And therefore, vicariously through you, your family will become incredibly great. Let me just give a better example to clean this up. Let's just say when I got together with my wife, she maintained her career and I went in my career and we were just together. My wife wouldn't be at home. I wouldn't be at home. Somebody else would be taking care of our child. She'll be spending at least half of her time, if she's honest, right, if she's pursuing it, half of her time focused on building a career for herself and then half of time helping me in ways that she can after she's done building her own career. If my career and her career are not congruent or in the same area, we are literally building two different empires under the same roof. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded household is unstable in all its ways. How can I adequately support my wife if I'm focused on building what I'm building? How can she adequately support me if she's focused on building what she's building? You know, you got people that are married today that got two different bank accounts. She got her bank account. He got his bank account. This is not what God has called us to do in my personal opinion. And you live in America, so do whatever you want to do. This is just my opinion. I believe that as a man, God sends you in a direction and you, and you have a wife that's dedicated 100% to helping the goal be accomplished. That means that what did my wife do? She makes sure the house is clean. She makes sure I'm encouraged. She take care of the baby for us. She, she creates a loving, nurturing home environment where I come home to peace. And, and she does stuff too. It ain't like she sit at the house, she a slave, you know? I built a store for her so she has her own store. So she just pops in here whenever she feel like it. The whole team is ready for her because I built it. And she come in and give suggestions and she sell merch. Whenever she feel like it, she don't have to do no uh, customer service. She don't have to make it. She don't have to do nothing. She don't have to take the loans, investment, risks, nothing. That. She don't have to do none of that. She just come in here and say, I like to put this on the shirt, and the whole team takes care of my wife. That's her little pet project. She go thrift on the side. That's her pet project. Everything that she do is focused on how can we help accomplish what God has called me to. And he called me. Me and her are one flesh, so technically it's us. And then how... That's how men are incredibly successful. And when women and men are not on the same page, you see stuff like Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos' wife left him to go pursue her own thing. Just imagine if the expertise and wisdom that she brought to the table, she applied to helping him get to where jointly they could go together. Imagine what he could do. But now half his money going to her doing, giving money away to Democrats. Half of his wealth is going to his wife and she's giving it away to Democrats and nonprofits for abortion and LGBTQ stuff to the tunes of hundreds of millions of dollars. I don't think that's the way God planned for us to be.